Hey guys, it's your girl Nigel Chloe, and welcome back to another episode of Nigel Chloe's Corner. I haven't done Nigel Chloe's Corner in a while, but there's been something that has been tearing at my heart that has been reaching the headlines for at least the past year. But this last recent death of a fellow content creator has just really made me want to share um, a personal story of my own, but it's also some of the things that I ask some fellow people in the health, medical and health field. So if you're new to Nigel Chloe Corner, this is where I tell stories about myself or other people. And you, my viewers and my watchers, are more than welcome to email me at cemasialu at gmail.com to share a story that you would want me to talk about Nigel Chloe's Corner. The names, if you share your story, are anonymous. I'm not going to, unless you give out the details, no one's going to know it's you or what it's about. I give everybody whole new names, but that's just a way of just me talking about some real life things and how they affect other people different ways. Like I said, there has, um, in the past year, I've been seeing stories in the news, stories on social media about how our fellow colored women, African-American women, black women have been silenced in the health field when it comes to their care. And like I said, when, until it actually happens to you, you never really realize um, what it means or how severe it is. So I'm going to kind of just give a backstory about the beautiful woman that we lost and how her journey and how her story made me want to come out and share mine. So if you need to Nigel Chloe Corner family, welcome. Please hope you stay. If you're watching at this moment, please go ahead and like and comment and let's just get into it. So just to, like I said, I'm just trying to share some light on the disparities that a lot of black women have been facing in the medical field when it comes down to their medical care. So this, it kind of started with um, Jessica Peakway, this beautiful angel right here. She was a content creator influencer as well. She passed away in the month of March and her journey started probably in 2002. Um, I believe, you know, I might have my dates, but I know for sure it, it started for her. Um, Jessica Pete, wait for those, I said, those of you who don't know, she was a wife, she was a mom, um, a daughter, an influencer, and she was just known for shedding light on natural hair and being an advocate for women um, of color wearing their natural hair, embracing their natural hair, making sure the natural hair is, 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 is it's healthy. So, um, Jessica passed, like I said, she passed away. But before she passed away, she was an advocate for her, um, this, an advocate for her health, for her well-being, and also wanting to make sure that we fellow women of color are able to advocate for ourselves. So whatever happened to her did not happen, would not happen to any of us. You know, to say prevention is better than cure. So I have some little notes, a little backstory here. That's why I'm going to be looking down because statistics of what has been happening within the past year or two with women, the black, the fellow black women or fellow black women having to be silenced. That's why I call it the silence of the black woman because a lot of times it was even on the Real Housewives of, oh, uh, not Real Housewives, Married to Medicine, how a uh, one of the fellow doctors on there, she got a lot of slack for saying that black women tend to be over exaggerating and we tend to say we are in pain when we're really not in pain so she got a lot of heat from the um the black culture of black people because they're like how are you a fellow black woman saying downplaying our pain and what we're going through when you should be the voice for us um so the, just a little brief statistics like i said um into what i'm saying because just because I want to make sure I'm giving you guys some factual information. So it says black women experience most of the higher rates of death, as well as discrimination in the systemic racism when it comes to the medical care providers. Majority of 55% say they have at least had had at least six negative experiences, including having to speak up to get proper care and being treated with less respect than other patients. That's sad. 55% of black women say they had to at least they've had six negative experiences and having to speak up in themselves in, in compared to their other non-race and other counterparts sorry you guys i'm just trying to get the 
because it, it bothers me. So my, if I hear me stutter or, or mumble, it really, really bothers me because I, I'm going to share my experience and story. But I want to just kind of give you some of these feedbacks and statistics. So back to the beautiful Jessica. So um, Jessica, as a mom of two, she posted her journey of how she was suffering from like heavy bleeding and passing through clots was constantly going to the hospital just for bleeding and not just like regular period blood. It was just like it was just gushing. She would go to the emergency room a lot of times, got to the point to her to where she had to, her husband found her collapse on the floor, fainted, um, almost dead, rushed her to the emergency room and they had to give her 10 units of blood because her blood level was so low from the constant um, bleeding that she was having. So this whole time that she was talking to her doctor, she even reached out to some couple of fellow women and asked them like, hey, you guys, this is what I'm experiencing. I'm having all these constant bleeding and clots. Is this normal? The doctors just said, oh, she had fibroids. So um, but she could think she knew like, and you know, God gives us a spirit of discernment and he give and we women have an intuition Like we can know when something's wrong. We can feel when something's wrong. But of course, she trusted her, her care, her care providers, because like these are people that she's probably been going to for a while. And she assumed like well, most of us assume that they know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. So she just kept on going with it. But she has to always have to have units and units, her blood, her, her. Her um, iron levels were really, really low. So she decided to go um, seek a second opinion. So this, mind you, this all happened to her in 2002. In 2002, she was told by her doctors that she was diagnosed with fibroids. So the fibroids were the reason why she was having this constant bleeding and constant clotting and just losing weight, just losing, losing, losing weight. And but move on. That's one from 2002. So imagine almost bleeding for a whole year. Think and you're telling people something's wrong and they keep on telling you it's something else. So we kind of go ahead to, because she says she was suffering from heavy bleeding and passing through a lot of clots as large as organs while being brushed off by her doctor and told her symptoms were normal. These were normal symptoms of fibroids. So during fast forward to January of 2023, in January 2023, during the appointment, the uh, doctor was unable to perform a biopsy on her. So the doctor was able to perform a biopsy on her. So he you know, asked for permission. He she asked for permission. They can be able to like look down in her cervix area. And upon looking down and checking her cervix area, they found out um, she would come to find out that she had a large mass, a huge, large mass in her cervix. And she found out that a short time later that it wasn't fibroids that she was dealing with this whole time. She was that was causing her bleeding and all the discomfort. It was stage three cervical cancer. Like this hurts me because, like I said, cancer. I I I know cancer too well. Cancer has affected my family. I know um, two of my aunts that passed over with cancer. So when it comes to cancer. I, cancer and I are not, we're not, no, I don't know where cancer came from, but I want it to return back to the pits of hell because cancer has affected too many lives and too many families. But the fact that she went a whole year being hushed and being told that she was having something when she wasn't, but she knew that something was wrong. And if it wasn't for this other doctor, whoever the other doctor is, God bless you. Or God leading you to do something else for her. Knowing that you have now stage three cancer. It's by the grace of God. And you definitely have to start treatment right away. And it's like a 50-50 chance. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But this is where her journey began. Of starting to be an advocate for her well-being and herself. I started sharing her journey on social media. Letting women know that. We shouldn't be silenced. We shouldn't be quiet. That we have a voice. We have a voice. That is the background of Jessica and her journey. And like I said, just kind of seeing it. And it just made me kind of think of my own pregnancy experience that I had. Um, sorry, I've been talking a lot. This is just my Daughter of the King Nigel Chloe mug. You can get it on my website. It just says DK Daughter of the King. By Nigel Chloe. So join the Nigel Chloe Daughter of the King movement. But 
once upon a time, time, time. So last year, of course, you guys know I, I, I was pregnant last year. And one of the things that stood out to me was how after I gave birth, after I gave birth, um, I had, I, in one of my vlogs, I kind of talked about my experience with male doctors. This was my, my, my first two pregnancies. I had a female doctor. I had a, a, a African American doctor and I loved her so much, but because of the type of insurance I had this third pregnancy, she, her practice didn't accept it. So I had to find someone else. And this particular insurance, they just recommended this doctor. So I was like, I don't even know why I decided because I, I reached out to two of the doctors and I kept on getting a run around. I didn't get a call back with them. So I was like, okay, you know what? Well, maybe let me try a male doctor this time and see. It was the worst decision I've ever done. Um, just because I didn't think he was sympathetic, empathetic. I didn't think he understood. He had, he was so busy. He had so many patients that he saw constantly. So he, every time I would go, it was like almost if it was his first time seeing me. I would have to repeat a lot of things. I'm like, yo, like, I understand you have a patient, but each patient should feel like they're important at that moment. So do your homework before I come in. If you need to take a 10, 15 minute break in between patients, don't try to charge so you can get more money to people, but actually take the time and pause and look in your chart and see who you're going to, you know, look at the history of the person you're going to see. So you're not wasting my time asking me the same questions over and over again each time I come and see you. But long story short, so in December, I went to see him about, like I said, I talked about my history of postpartum depression and I was starting to have my therapy, but I was about to get back to work. I was feeling a lot of anxiety and all these things like that. So I talked to him about like some anxiety, um, just being on medication, like some type of antidepressant and all these things that were going on and where I felt like he was trying to watered down what I was feeling he was like well I can give you something if you're really if you're really um, feel like you're if you're really feeling depressed if you really feel anxious what do you mean if I really feel that way I'm telling you what's going on I'm letting you know I had this history before I'm doing the preventive so where why how why would you say if you really like that's where I just felt like he just watered down my whole experience if you really and it just bothered me. And I, I am one of those people, like when I'm, when it comes to the medical, when it comes to my medical, I, I don't advocate for myself. And I said this after hearing Jessica's story, I, I wish I would have spoke up more and told him I didn't like the way he said it or what he said. But I just felt that at that moment he was watering down or he was trying to brush to the side what I was really, really feeling at that moment. And I didn't like it. Another story I wanted to share was like this happened to my um in my second pregnancy. In my second pregnancy, I had a C-section. Of course, I had a C-section. My daughter came about two weeks early. Um, and because of the fact that I did, um, she came two weeks early, I was supposed to have gone the following week to go and do some blood work to get find out my levels so they can know they can prepare if anything happens. So she came two weeks early and I had to go to the hospital before they were able to get any of my labs back to know that my iron was low. So during the whole C-section, I can remember, I just felt like a lot of the, of course during this, you don't feel the pain, but I can feel the tugging and the pulling down there. I was just, it just felt discomfort for me, but you know, it was a, it was a, my doctor, my black doctor, she was on vacation. Like I said, she, we planned for a particular date so she went on vacation so another black doctor delivered me and she was a woman too so I and they were part of the same practice so I didn't even bother because I just I've seen her before but I wasn't really familiar with her but after I gave birth um they took me back to my room and I was very very just out of it I don't me and anesthesia are not best friends because it hits me hard and I'll just be out of it uh, I couldn't even hold the baby because I was shaking. And so I get back to my room. I remember my cousin, I just kind of remember in and out, in and out, like my cousins were in there. And of course, my mom's in the medical field at the time. She's a retired nurse. So I get into the room. She's looking at me and she's like, she could tell something was off. She was like, my face was pale. She was like, why she, she was, she asked the nurse, why is she looking so 
pale, like what's going on with her. And the nurse is like, oh, you know, she's just probably responding to the anesthesia. She's okay, mom, don't worry. And my mom was like, no, she's looking too pale. They were trying to give him the baby. I couldn't hold the baby. I could barely keep my eyes open. But my mom just kept on insisting, like, no, something's wrong with my daughter. But of course, the nurse was like, she's okay. Just This is just what usually happens after. So my mom comes up to me and she kind of like checks my pupils and she kind of saw that they were just pale and white. And she was like, no, she's too pale. Something's going on. She lifts up. The nurse is like, okay, let me check um, her incision or her wound. Like, this is probably literally 45 minutes, an hour after I just finished my C-section. She, The nurse moves the cover of the blanket and just blood gushing, gushing gushing out if my mom was not there only god knows where i would be today if my mom didn't advocate for me if my mom didn't insist that something was wrong because at that moment like i said i couldn't talk for myself it's it's emotional it, it does get me emotional because I, I just gave you two examples of how for me i felt like I was brushed aside and one I was alert and the other one I wasn't but just having someone there to advocate for me only God knows where I would be today if my mom wasn't insisting that they continue to check there's something wrong with my daughter and that's just a brief story of me imagine the many women who have gone through this and have just stayed quiet or the many women that have passed away because they took the first and the response that they were given, trusting these providers to be doing their job and knowing what they know what they do. So I even after talking to some um, fellow, um, people in the medical field, a lot of them said the same thing, that they, yeah, they notice some of the bias, not only towards patients, but even towards them as medical providers themselves. How one particular person, she mentioned that even as her as a caretaker, um, a nurse or in the, a medical provider in the field, when they when the patients see that she's black, they start questioning her degrees. They start questioning her um, her experience, as if her skin makes her less of makes her less capable of doing the job. Um, it happens. It's happening too much for us to be comfortable. It's happening too much for us to stay silent. So my men out there, you can be advocates for your wives. You can be advocates for your moms. You can be advocates for your sisters. Don't let, if you, if your wife is telling you something is wrong and whoever her medical provider is keeps on trying to water it down, uh, a fellow, I want to, a man of the other doctors is like, listen, if you don't like what your doctor is saying, he said, but point blank, if you don't like what your doctor is saying, if you don't like how you're being treated, seek somebody else. Thank God you have insurance. You can go switch and get somebody else. Don't sit there and let, and, and feel like you have to endure this pain because you're a quote unquote strong black woman. We don't need to be strong. We need to be taken care of. We need to be nurtured. We need to be heard. That is the point of this video. I do not want any fellow woman to have to go through what the beautiful Jessica went through. And I said, you know, thank God she was able to spread some light and hopefully that helped a lot of women. But I honestly feel like if her story could have been different, you know, of course, God is the final decider of, of, of life. But I feel like if she would have had found out earlier they could have intervened and her cervical cancer could have been treated earlier that's just my opinion that is just my belief but at the end of the day like i said god is the giver and taker of it all but i hope this story jessica's story a few of my examples makes us women to advocate for ourselves stand up for ourselves we have to get the rain um, advocate for our health and our well-being because if we don't who will who will how many of us have moms that are always around or who have the medical prov provider experience that can speak up for us we have to and if you don't like the way you're treated you switch and go to someone else who will hear you so that is my ninja chloe's corner for you guys for today i would love to hear your comment below uh, my fellow women, have you experienced it? My men, do you know anybody that experiences these things? Let's keep 
let's, let's get this, this let's, let's keep the talk, let's keep talking. Let's have this dialogue and share it, share it with any woman that you might know. So that way that knowledge is key. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is power. You have the right to change. And one of the things I was, I, I, that stopped me from changing my doctor when I, I, when I was noticing some things, like I said, I felt it in the beginning before I even gave birth, but because I was ready, like I switched doctors maybe five or six months before I was due. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm almost done. Let me just continue. But I could have by the, after the second or third appointment with this male doctor, I should have listened to myself and switched. I should have listened to myself and switched and got to a person to what I feel like was more comfortable and was willing to hear my voice and didn't just see me as a bill to him to bill my insurance. Yeah, I've talked a lot, um, but I'm going to just leave it here. Um, rest in peace, Jessica. I I hope that your journey of speaking will not be in vain. I hope that more women learn to advocate for themselves, speak up for themselves. Um, let's remember the family of Jessica Peetway and her husband, her kids, um, her parents, all the, all those who knew her and loved her, let's remember them that they're strength. And we just hope that her journey is not going in vain. Thank you, beautiful people for watching, um, on a more funnier side, fun side, cause that was really, really intense. This is a nice, cute little Amazon wig. I wanted to wear natural hair, something that looks natural hair in honor of Jessica. Cause y'all know my hair, I'm, my hair is short, but I just loved how this wig looks. Cause it just kind of looks it's real to me. And I just put a cute little Ankara um, hairpin. This white set is from Amazon. It's a, just a nice, cute crop top set. I'm going to link it as well below and with the afro wig if anybody's interested but toodles i'll talk to you guys later gotta make dinner for the kids peace love and soul and my black women please speak up for yourself i love you and there's nothing you can do about it